for today's experiments, we are going to determine the uh, Ka value uh, for um, weak acid, which is the acidic acid. And uh, in order to determine the Ka value, we are going to use titration and plot the graph of the titration curve based on the pH and uh, volume of the base used, so volume of the sodium hydroxide. We are using sodium hydroxide as our, our base. So for the first, like every 0.5 milliliters, we are going to uh, measure or following the procedure is one milliliter, 0.5 milliliter, we follow the procedure, you measure the, the pH. Obviously, you start with the acid, so the pH is going to be low at the beginning, and then eventually is going to uh, to increase. And when we have like a, all acid being neutralized, then we only have base left. We are going to get high pH values. We will stop the titration when we have a three, four constant high pH. And after the sharp change, when the sharp change is taking place, basically we have our equivalence point here. That means that we have added enough base to neutralize all of the acid that we had in there. So this would be the volume for the, uh, that's the volume for the coolants. And let's say, we just assume that this is a hypothetical number, if this value here is 14. So we find the half the volume, volume half volume, V one half, basically you divide 14 by two, and you get the value of seven here. So if the 14 is here and then mark seven, draw a line to perpendicular line to cross the pH curve. And then from that point, find the value for pH. So this would be the pH at V half. pH at V half that equals Ka value. So we have pKa, I'm sorry, the pH at half volume equals pKa. The purpose of today's experiment is to find the Ka value. So we can take the antilog of this value of the pKa in order to get the Ka. Um, you should watch the, the pre-lab discussions video for all the calculations, which I'm going to explain for this experiment. But uh, I just wanted you to have an idea if you're doing the experiment, why we are calculating or finding the pH, uh, pH at every 0.5, because we want to have a better um, titration curve, and then how we are finding the value for Ka. So we are using sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide is a secondary standard. It cannot count as a primary standard because sodium hydroxide pellets, those are um, as a kind of anhydrous agent and they, they absorb, absorb uh, moisture easily from the environment. So by the time I measure the mass of those pellets but, and bring it and, and try to make the solution, the mass is changing. Just as I'm adding on the scale on the vein paper, the mass is changing. So I cannot trust the concentration of sodium hydroxide that I prepare using the solid sodium hydroxide. I'm using KHV, potassium hydrogen phthalate. The abbreviation for this uh, um, acid is the KHV. I'm using this as a primary standard. KHB doesn't have the problems that sodium hydroxide has. So I'm going to make a sodium hydroxide solution now because it's not a standard. You will see me making the solution just using a beaker, 500 milliliter measurement using the beaker. So following the procedure, I'm going to perform the first part of the experiment. I have a six molar sodium hydroxide here. With the six molar sodium hydroxide, and the procedure is asking me for 11 milliliters, measure the 11 milliliters. And again, it's not very accurate. So I'm not going to uh, have you just look at the meniscus and all that, but I'm just going to show you that I use the 11 milliliters of the solution. I pour into a 600 milliliter beaker using the procedure and dilute it with the, uh, with the, um, 
distilled water. Now, normally, if I could trust the concentration of the solution that is made, the R stock solution, I would just use M1V1 equals M2V2 and find the concentration of the diluted solution. But since I cannot trust the concentration for sodium hydroxide, and is not a primary standard unless it has been standardized in the during the experiment, then uh, I am just making the solution, making sure that it's even. So I would use either magnetic stir or a stir with the stirring rod for about minutes or two uh, to make sure I have even um, solution. And when I'm filling up the burette with this solution, the first portion that I'm taking is not more dilute than the second portion. So I have to make sure that my solution is, um, is even. I have the, the solution I'm going to continue mixing and I would transfer a smaller beaker. I would fill up the burette for you. Oxidium hydroxide I, I made already. Uh, by dilution, I'm going to fill up the burette, but burette needs to be conditioned first. To condition the burette, we are going to um, first rinse with deionized water. Um, the good thing about checking, uh, uh, like performing this part of the um, conditioning is that we already check the burette is working. When I open the stop cook for the, for the burette, which is like in the vertical position, completely vertical position, liquid should be transferred out. And sometimes it's not working, uh, but luckily it's working now. So by using the, the deionized water, that part is done. Then I would use about five to 10 milliliters of the sodium hydroxide solution. I fill up the burette with the sodium hydroxide solution and uh, rotate the burette to make sure that inside wall of the burette is all rinsed with the sodium hydroxide. Basically the sodium hydroxide solution replaced any deionized water we have, we have in the burette. And I also want to make sure that the tip of the burette is also washed with sodium hydroxide. And I can empty this into the waste container. I already have my waste container labeled. I'm using it um, for just collecting waste. So wash it with the deionized water, then wash with the, with the Sodium hydroxide, well, in this case, the sodium hydroxide, or any time you are filling up the burette with your standard solution, uh, something with the known concentration, you want to make sure to raise that with that specific solution. I'm going to set the burette on the burette clamp and fill it up to pass the zero line. Making sure the stop clock is closed. Now, I'm going to take some of these liquids like gently Remove some of the liquid by opening the stop coat drop by drop until the meniscus aligns with exactly zero line. I have to also make sure that there is no air bubbles or air trap here because then if, it, if, if liquid replaces that, it's going to cause some experimental air. So I have my burette set at zero, and that would be the initial burette reading for your experiment for the first try. I have this set up. I'm going to leave all my solutions on the side. I use it later, and I'm going here to measure the mass of the um, KHV, because that's the acid that I'm using. I need to prepare my KHV. 
for the first trial, we need the mass of the empty flask and we need the mass for the um, for the flask plus the KHV. Uh, my Erlenmeyer flask is labeled trial one. The balance or scale is set at zero. I, put, uh, I press the tear to make sure that it is zero. Now, that's the number is the mass for Erlenmeyer flask and I want you to record that number. Try to zoom for you to see it. Okay, now, so make sure to record this number as the mass for empty Erlenmeyer flask for trial one. Then I need 0.8 gram. So if it's a 0.8 gram based on the procedure again, we can go anywhere between 0.75 to 0.85. So this should go to 117.2, uh, about that. So I would add slowly. Okay. So we are going to add until it's 117.2 and no more than 0.3. So that's it. Record this number as the mass of the flask plus the KHV for trial one. And I hope that you can see it, right? So that's it for trial one. We are going to do the same for trial two. Sorry for reaching out. Now for trial two, uh, I just wanna make my KHV measurements ready. Tear balance scale to zero. Get the mass for empty flask for trial two. This is the empty flask for trial two, 116.554. And you record all digits that the balance provides us. And we are going to measure 0.8 grams. We always have music, it's good. So that would go to uh, 117.3. Okay, record this mass as the mass of the flask plus KHV for trial two, and that is 117.359. To each of these, we are going to add 50 milliliters of water. A graduate cylinder, please. 50 milliliters of water, deionized water. So I measure 50 milliliters of deionized water. And I dissolve the KHP in water. Dissolve. Best if it dissolves first completely before I start titration. I'm adding phenolphthalein as the acid base indicator used in titration. So for now, I'm just preparing my KHV. For the second trial, also, I'm adding the 50 milliliter deionized water. And few drops of few drops of the phenolphthalein. 